Evening, ladies and gents, it's Simon Brown here. Uh, I've picked three reversal patterns, and to be frank, if you go to Google or you speak to someone who has a, a vast understanding of candle patterns, they would tell you that there are many, uh, and, and many hundreds, if not potentially maybe even thousands. I've picked three for, 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 for two reasons. One, primarily because I have experience of all three. Uh, I use islands for end-of-day stocks. There's an issue around that, and I'll, I'll touch on that. And I use engulfing for intraday Aussie trading. So they, they patterns which I'm familiar with and which I'm using. Um, and I picked the kangaroo tail because when I was doing research on it a couple of years ago, probably 2005 or 2006, it seemed to give a very high level of probability. It's got a nice, easy place to put a stop loss. So I thought I'd throw that into the equation. As I said, there are others. We will certainly touch on them uh, in later webinars. But for this evening, for, for in order to have some brevity, we thought we would stick initially with just three. I suppose first, what are we looking at? Reversal patterns. What are we trying to do? We're trying to trend. We're trying to call it a change in trend. And the short answer to that is it can be very profitable if you can catch a, a reversal in trend, but it can be very risky. In essence, what we're doing is we're calling a top or a bottom to a market. Now, if you've been to my, my trade to trade well, you'll know that I say stay away from calling tops or bottoms. I, I, I get a little bit clever with it. I use other stuff with the confirmation. I'll touch on that in a moment. Um, we certainly need to bring other tools into a system. That's a confirmation. What I will certainly do within my intraday trading is, is within a broader trend. In other words, I'll define a primary trend using a MACD or moving averages, and I'll say, say the, the big picture is up. And that big picture, I'm sitting in a 15-minute chart, might only be a couple of hours, but the big picture is up. The short-term picture is down. I get a reversal pattern, such as an engulfing candle. Then I would look to enter a trade. And an important point there is that they can be used in that primary or secondary. I like to always, um, and in fact, uh, Alexander Elder put me onto the concept where he said, you know, get a, a big picture and then narrow it down. He actually talked about three levels. I only go so far as two levels. I get the primary picture. Is the market going up or down? And then I wait for a, a, a market which is going counter to that and then reverts back to that big picture. In terms of time frame, any time frame, you know, whether you're using end of day, I, I traditionally use two time frames. If I'm doing intraday trading on Aussie futures, I'm looking at a 15 minute time frame. If I'm using any other trading, I'm looking at an end of day. But your time frame is not critical here. It's the usual story. As you shorten that time frame, you will increase the frequency of trades. The trade duration will reduce. The profit slash loss will reduce and your brokerage costs will go up significantly. As you expand that duration, move to a daily chart or a, maybe even a weekly chart, you'll have less trades, longer trades, and they'll make more profit. I never drop below 15 minutes if I'm doing intraday, I'm in a 15 minute. If I'm doing end of day, well then, obviously, I'm end of day. Uh, three that I'm looking at this evening, island reversals, kangaroo tails, and engulfing candles. Um, I trade island reversals on stocks. There's an issue with that that I'm grappling with at the moment because of my, my uh, being in the media and TV and the like. I typically I publish all of my uh, equity holdings on my uh, website simonbrown.coza, and then I typically only really trade either in I trade indices. So stock trading is something which I'm not 100% comfortable about. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about going on TV and talking about a share when I might have a short position for purely technical reasons and I'm discussing it from a fundamental perspective. But broadly, I will do those. Kangaroo tails, as I said, not at the moment, but I certainly did research on them. And engulfing candles I use as my primary trading when I'm trading index futures, uh, index futures being the Aussie futures. As I said, there are others. There are hundreds of others. It, thousands of others. We'll get to some of them in other webinars this evening. We're just touching on three. As is always the case, it's about discipline. Trading is about discipline. It's about waiting for that confirmation. Don't preempt it. Yes, you can wait. If you trade end of day, you can wait for days, weeks, months, and then when you get the trigger, you can wait for hours, and then the confirmation fizzles out. It's always about that waiting. Don't preempt the move. Always wait for it to come to you. 
set your exit strategies before you enter, always important, and of course, remember your stop loss. There's never a reason to not have a stop loss. Always, always a stop loss. So the first one is an island reversal. It's a very rare pattern, in other words, you certainly don't see it very often. And in a sense, what you've got, and I'll look at the one on the left first, you've got a market which has been moving higher, you then get a candle and you get a market that moves lower. What's critical is that gap. In other words, you've got the island. Now, in this case, the island is only one candle. It could be multiple candles. But it's that gap that's important. You've got the gap up and then you've got the gap down. And if you look at a falling market, you've got a market that's been coming down. You get a gap to the downside and then you get a gap to the upside. Again, that island candle could be as many potential candles, it doesn't, you know, I'm not saying it needs to be one, I'm not saying it needs to be ten, it can be as many as need be, as long as you get a very clear gap between that island and the two bits of land, so to speak. You need that gap to be there. So what will typically happen is you've got a market that's moving, you get a gap, you'll get a period of time from one to more candles where you're going more or less in a sideways consolidation zone and then you gap up and now you've got your gap and that typically is your signal. So it's your two gaps which leave you that island situation. Uh, again, any time frame, that's not important. What you would like to see is a bit of a volume spike towards the end of the island, and certainly that day after the second gap, in other words, the confirmation day, you would like to see a volume spike coming through. That would be a, a good confirmation for it. Uh, entry is, is after the second gap, and stop loss at the initial island. So if we jump to the same picture, but putting entries into it, where would your entry be? Your entry would be in that candle. Now, where are you going to enter in that candle? Well, quite simply, you're going to have to wait for towards the end of the candle. Because say this is a, let's say it's a 60-minute chart. So though each candle represents 60 minutes of time. If you get in at the first sort of a half minute of, of, of that 60 minute, you don't know you've got a gap. What you really need to do is be very sure that that gap is solid, and the only way to do that is to enter at the late stages of that particular candle. So you're likely to be entering more towards, in this case, it would be the close, and it might be the lows. In truth, in that candle, it could be anywhere. But you want to wait for the end of that candle before you enter. That would be your entry. And your stop loss position is quite easy. Put it on the other side of the gap. So as soon as you're entering, you're saying, cool, I'm going to get in here, uh, there's my stop loss, and that obviously helps you very, very much with your position sizing. It helps you understand, got in here, now you can do your 2% rule, you can handle that in that sense. And if you're looking, so that would be a short trade, if you're looking for a long trade, again, there's your island sitting there, the trend has been down, it's now reversed to up, that's the trend reversal. What we see is that would be your entry candle, and you would enter towards the end of the candle, and then your stop loss would be at the bottom of that gap. And it comes to what the previous slide where I said it's about patience. The trick being is if, say, you're trading end of day, you can wait until 4.30 in the afternoon. It's looking good. You're waiting, you're waiting, and suddenly at 4.30, you were looking to take a long trade. The U.S. opens. There's a sudden sell-off, and it suddenly goes crazy. Uh, Benny's asking if I ignore the wicks. No, I don't. In this particular example, the wicks aren't, aren't very prevalent, but the wicks are part of it. So the wicks, you, you want to have that gap which are excluding the wicks within the candle. You will often see what I would call almost a pseudo uh, a gap where the wicks are cutting into it. That's then not an island. You want to draw those island lines at the bottom or the top of those wicks so that you completely ignore them. So that's your island reversal, a very rare charting pattern. Um, oddly enough, when I'm doing research on the internet, I'm finding two answers as to its reliability. Some folks are saying high reliability, some are saying low reliability. My experience of trading it is typically a fairly high reliability if you get the volume towards the end of the island. So if you had six candles here, you want candles five and six to see a pickup in volume that then significantly increases your reliability in the position.
Kangaroo tail. Uh, this is one which I don't trade, but I did a lot of research on it, as I said, in about uh, 2005, 2006. Uh, again, quite very rare, but a fairly strong reversal pattern. And what you would see is it's literally that. It looks like a kangaroo tail very, very much. It gives you the, the, the strong sell-off and then a reversal back to pretty much where it opened. So your body of the candle is going to be very small. It, it might actually be open and close at the same level. It might have some points, but it's got that strong tail below it. Uh, Alexander Elder first mentioned uh, candle, kangaroo tails uh, in his book, Come Into My Trading Room. It's that spike. So you, in the case one illustration I showed there, it's a strong spike down followed by reversal within that same candle. And that's critically important. It happens within the same candle. Uh, into after the kangaroo, I'll show you some entries there. Stop loss halfway down. Again, time frame not important. You can use almost any time frame. So here what you would do is you would enter in that blue candle there. That's your strong move. That's the candle that you would look to be entering into. And your stop loss you would do, as I said, you would position the stop loss halfway down the kangaroo tail. So again, you've got a nice specific stop. You know where you're going to exit out of. Again, where are you entering in that blue candle? In truth, you're entering much more towards the top of the candle than you are at the bottom because you need to wait for that confirmation to happen. That's critically important. So it's very much a case of, again, waiting for the kangaroo tail to form, waiting for that confirmation pattern, and then saying, cool, I've got my stop loss, now I can run it. And the point with the kangaroo tail, I didn't mention it with the island, but it's applicable across, is you put your stop loss, and then as the trade goes in your way, you could start to move that stop loss up behind you. So you know, maybe you could say uh, the previous candles low of the wick, less some points or something like that, and you could keep on moving the stop loss up behind you. Stop loss is not the area I'm particularly focusing on this evening, but that's trick typically the hard part of trading. That's typically the point where where to position the stop loss is critically important and, 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 and difficult. Frankly, it's, it's, it's uh, difficult emotionally, difficult financially, difficult across all the levels. But as always, stop loss, always critically important. So your entry would be in that blue candle, the confirmation. Your stop loss would be halfway down the kangaroo tail, and then you would run the trade, and as it goes your way, you would move the stop loss up behind it. And then the third one we're looking at this evening is an engulfing candle. I use this in my uh, Aussie trading intraday. Here you do ignore the wick. So I'm only looking at the body of the candle. I'm not interested in the wick of the candle. And what you've got, you've got a market that's been moving higher, and then you get, so you've got your, your white candles, which would also potentially be your green ones, and then you get a large red, or in this case, large black candle, and it engulfs. Ignoring the wick, what does engulf me? Well, it means that the high is higher than that, and the low is lower than that. The candle is bigger. It's also critically important that it engulfs astride the, the previous candle. It doesn't engulf, but it's up here somewhere, and you've got a, a high, you know, it needs to physically engulf it. You're only looking at those two candles. The, the other two there are nice, but they're irrelevant. It's those two you're looking at. And then on the downside, same story, market is falling. You've got your, your down candle there, and then you get an engulfing up candle. What's important here is that what we're getting is actually a two candle formation. Now, kangaroo tail is a one candle formation. An island reversal can potentially be a one candle formation. In truth, it could be a multiple candle formation. But here we've got a two candle. And that, that makes it a slightly rarer event. And oddly enough, the fact that it's slightly rarer doesn't actually significantly improve its probability. It, it's probably, of the three, I would say it's, it's the most frequent, although still relatively rare, and it's certainly the least reliable of the three. And I think that's because, although it's perhaps less frequent than spinning tops and dojos and other sorts of candles, it's a lot more frequent than the island reversals and kangaroos. And I particularly focused on, on reversal patterns that are perhaps a little bit rarer because they're perhaps a little bit more powerful. A reversal pattern that comes up 10 times in a day, well, that's perhaps a little less exciting. As I said, I, I trade the engulfing candle within Aussie Futures on a 15-minute chart, and I average 1.4 trades per day. But what I'm doing is I'm using a MACD to give me direction. So, for example, let's look at the bullish engulfing on the right-hand side here. 
if my MACD was saying go long, in other words, my short, I'm using the engulfing candle in my intraday on the 15 minute um, on all the futures. And what I'm doing is I'm saying, and I'm looking at the right hand side here, which is a, a, I'm getting a buy signal there, but I wouldn't confirm the buy signal unless what I had was a MACD, which was giving me an upward trend. And I do a standard MACD, and I say if the short moving average is above the long moving average, we're in an uptrend, but we've been seeing some selling into that uptrend, and now we get a reversal within that broader uptrend. As I said, candle body only, we ignore the wick on the candle. It must actually engulf. So lower reliability compared to the other two, um, and you enter if the next candle confirms. In other words, trades above the previous close if we're going long, or trades below if we're going short. Stop loss, bottom or halfway down that engulfing candle. Picture here. Now, oddly enough, when I, this was just I grabbed this over the last couple of days from Aussie Futures, 15 minute, and I found an engulfing candle. It also had a bit of a kangaroo tail, so it actually gave us two signals. But the one that we were focusing on was very much the uh, uh, engulfing candle. So we've had a situation where the market's been moving up. We had a couple of green candles. Then we got a red one that engulfed. This candle is your entry candle. Now, where do you enter on this one? Because it's two candle scenario, what happens is you enter pretty much immediately the, can the new candle falls. In other words, you don't wait for the end of the candle. And what that can mean is that you enter and then suddenly the market goes green on you and, and, and you get stop time. That, that's pretty much how it, now that's trading. Sometimes that happens. So there would be your engulfing candle. It engulfs the previous one, we're ignoring the wicks. Brilliant, that candle is your entry and you would enter towards the top of that candle. I would typically position my stop loss in my Aussie trading for reasons I'll delve into in a separate webinar, I'm using a trailing stop, but I would position my stop loss at least halfway, if not the top. I know some folks are quite uh, uh, aggressive on their stops, or unaggressive perhaps, and they would actually put it above the top of the wick. That to me is a little brave. I would use the body either halfway or a little a bit above that open level of the wick. Interestingly for the kangaroo, you've got the confirmation, but the entry of course to make sure it's really confirming would be much more towards the bottom of the candle, i.e. late in the candle time rather than early. So very much different strategies, different concepts in terms of when you enter as opposed to when you get it. And that a very, very key point, and I mentioned it up front, and I'm going to mention it again because it's important. It's key to understand that trading is about waiting. Know the setup that you're using. Know when you will therefore be entering and wait. Because often you could, I've been 14 minutes into a 15-minute candle, and I was convinced I was going to get a buy signal, and in that last minute, everything would go pear-shaped, and I wouldn't get the buy signal. Quick recap. We're doing reversal patterns this evening, which means we're talking, session, in essence, calling tops and bottoms. Make no mistake, that's dangerous. That's why I like to bring other indicators into it. I like to bring a little bit more into it. Um, and, and stick to your time frame. You might want to start in a, a larger, maybe you start in a 60 minute and then you, you trade down into a 15, but tops and bottoms are more dangerous. Massively rewarding when you get it right you can get a lot of fake signals, which gives you a bad drawdown, a lot of losing trades before you get that really good winner trade. There are many other reversal patterns. We just touched on three this evening. We will move on. I'm actually getting a presenter who will focus exclusively on uh, candle patterns, and we will look at other candle patterns. As I said, where possible, uh, use other indicators to confirm. Of course, indicators are lagging, whereas candles are what I call the right-hand side of the chart. They're right there simply because they're the price. They're the immediate. Any indicator you use is potentially going to lag. But see if you can't build in maybe a MACD or an RSI or something into it just to give you a little more wind at your back. Maybe start at a, at a, at a bigger picture and narrow it down to a smaller picture. Again, just bringing a little bit of wind into your back. That, that's always about trading. I, 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 particularly, I like the analogy. It, trading is building up things in your favor that run, against, that, that run with you rather than against you. You don't want to trade into the wind. You want to very much trade with the wind. Ladies and gents, that's it. Uh, Shortish and, and, and fairly simple. Just three patterns touched on this evening. Um, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to, 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 to put them in the question box down at the bottom. I'll answer as many as I can. Uh, if you've got audio attached, you're welcome to raise your hand, and I will activate your microphone, and we can take an audio question.
Fumani, have I muted your mic, your question? Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Simon. Um, um, the Congress chair, I know that it works very well, maybe on a big stock, but how would you really apply if you want to trade like penny stock, choice penny stock, because there's a lot of Congress chairs, you know, uh, I mean, can, can one really is it there or is it purely mainly for the big stock? It's a great question, and, and for folks the audio wasn't the greatest, he's asking, can we use these on, on smaller stocks? If they work great in the big guys, can we use them on the small guys? Short answer is no. Um, I'm always going to say, you know, if, if you want to trade smaller stocks, you've got to use a lot more around the fundamentals than, than around the technicals, and that's simply because often they have a lack of liquidity. They're always going to work better in your big stocks, and, and typically when I'm, when I'm trading, distinct from, from, and when I'm talking trading, I'm talking hours, maybe days, weeks, maybe months, but when I'm trading like that, I'm looking at the big guys. I don't trade the small stocks, even not even the mid caps. When I'm looking to trade mid caps and the like, I, I use a bit of a combination of, 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 of fundamentals and technicals. Um, and in fact, sometimes I, I did a purchase on, on, a, on, a, on a small cap the other week, maybe a month or two ago, and it was purely a fundamental based trade. So you're right in the sense that you're not going to get the greatest candles on the small stocks simply because of the lack of liquidity there. Thanks very much for attending. I hope you take something from it. All the best in your trading. Cheers.